I'm always amazed by how many people have an iPad and use it every day, but don't know about the amazing features I'm about to show you in this video. So I wanna show you 30 of my favorite tips, tricks, and hidden features on the iPad that can unlock its full potential. And these range from basically anything you would do with an iPad, from productivity, saving time, to gaming, and, and just more enjoyable for watching media on your device. Overall, these are going to bring your iPad to the next level. And the best thing is, these work on basically any iPad out there. I have the M1 iPad Pro that I'll be using to show you these in this video, but like I said, it'll work on an iPad Air, an iPad mini, a regular old iPad, whatever you have. So starting off with one of my favorite ones, this is perfect if you ever give your iPad to a child and you don't want them leaving the app you have open, or if you're giving your iPad to a friend and you don't want them snooping around, and it allows you to lock the app that is open, and it is absolutely impossible to go anywhere else on your iPad without triple pressing the power button and typing in a new pin that you just came up with. This is called guided access, and the way to enable this is to go to settings, go to accessibility, go to guided access, and then enable this. And then they can't leave that. They can't swipe down, they can't do anything unless you enter that pin to get out of that. The second one, this is fantastic for preventing theft of your iPad. Same thing with your iPhone as well. A lot of people think that if somebody stole my iPad or my phone, I could just track it on Find My. But the truth is, if somebody stole this, the first thing they would do, I guarantee, is they would swipe down to your control center and put it in airplane mode. And that way, you can't find it on Find My. So what I recommend doing is going into your settings, go to Face ID and Passcode, and disable Allow Access When Locked for basically everything on that list, but specifically your control center. That way, you can always find it if it's stolen, even if they power it off. Move along to number three, if you have any sensitive information on your iPad, whether it is photos or passwords or anything else you don't want getting out there, you can actually lock it in locked notes. So using Apple Notes, we'll talk a lot about that in this video, it's super powerful. So if you tap and hold on the note, you can tap on lock note, and that way nobody else can open that and see your information without unlocking it. Moving along, the next couple are going to be gestures, and these are super powerful ones that I'm always surprised. These are the ones that most people don't know about, maybe you know about some of them, but hopefully there's one or two new ones in here for you. So starting off with the five finger gesture from anywhere on your iPad, if you pinch with five fingers, it closes the app and brings you back to your home screen. Using four fingers is also very powerful. If you open up any app and you swipe four fingers left or right, that'll go between your most recently used apps. Of course, you could also do this with one finger down on that little white bar all the way on the bottom. And using three fingers, you can copy and you can paste. So if you pinch with three fingers, pinch inward, that is going to copy whatever you highlighted, whether it is photos or text, and then if you go to, say, a Google Doc or anywhere else and you wanna paste it, maybe in notes, you can go and pinch and expand with three fingers, and that is going to paste it. Two fingers is great for a lot of things on this iPad, but one thing that I really like doing here is if you have a lot of text and you wanna edit like one specific word earlier in the paragraph, sometimes it's a little tedious to tap on exactly the right spot, so you can use two fingers on your keyboard and tap and slide left and right. It works kind of like a trackpad and you can navigate the cursor to exactly where you want to edit that text in your paragraph. While we have the keyboard open, another really cool thing is you can actually access the numbers and the special characters by swiping down on the key. So from this keyboard, if I wanna use the ampersand, the little and symbol, I can swipe down on the number seven and that'll put it in right away. And as a side note, if you're new here, please click the subscribe button. I have many other videos with tips and tricks on the entire Apple ecosystem that you definitely don't wanna miss. Of course, from your home screen, if you swipe down from the middle of it, it opens up your spotlight. This is also accessible if you do command space with a keyboard, and this allows you to search anything on your iPad. This could be files, this could be apps, this could be just the, the web in general. If you wanna search something on Google, you can just type it in, and this is usually where I access most stuff. I almost never swipe around and look for an app. I just swipe down, type in the first three letters of the app, it pops up, and that's how I navigate my iPad. It's actually way faster once you get used to it. Some other cool gestures involve the buttons on here, so if you go into settings and you go to accessibility and find accessibility shortcuts, you can choose what triple pressing your power button is actually going to do. And that could be anything from changing the display, like the color filters for an actual accessibility feature, or it could be bringing up the keyboard. There's a lot of things you could do with this that, again, just add a nice little shortcut to your iPad. Now most people know if you swipe down from the top right corner, you get your control center and you can change a lot of quick settings, but what most people don't know is that tapping and holding each of these actually gives you extra functions. So tapping and holding the flashlight lets you change the brightness, for example. Tapping and holding the camera gives you a shortcut to either videos or selfies or photos, which brings me to another really cool trick. If you're playing music on here from anything, doesn't matter, Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, 
and you tap on the little now playing, you'll see on the very top right, kind of a little airplay icon. If you tap on that, you can select which device you're actually playing music out of, so speakers around your house, or earbuds, or AirPods, and specifically, you can play on multiple pairs of AirPods at the same time simultaneously. So say you're in the backseat of a car, or you're flying somewhere, and you wanna watch something with your friend, and you both have AirPods, you can connect them both to the same iPad and play through both AirPods at the same time. That way you're not both sharing like one AirPod each. Like you can both enjoy the same media at the same time. Next up we have kind of a category of, of window management. These are really great for productivity. The first thing is if you have any app open, say I have Google Chrome open, you'll see three little dots on the very top when I'm in landscape mode. If I tap on those, I can go into split view and that'll put the app on one side or the other. And I can choose, let's just say I wanted to have notes on the right side then and you can actually slide a little white bar in the middle back and forth to resize how these actually are split on the screen. So that's a great way to kind of have multiple apps open at the same time, great for multitasking, but there's also another option here. So if I have this app open, for example, I can tap on the three dots on the top and go to slide over. And this is a completely different thing from split view. And this kind of gives you like a little column on the right, which would be great for maybe music or emails or, or your maybe to-do list or something like that. Notes could be like a little thing on the side. And then maybe you wanna be browsing the web, you can do everything else. And you just have this little window over on the right side that is your little slide over window. And when you don't want that, you can tap and drag it all the way over out of screen. So now it's not even there, but if you just swipe over from the right, it appears on the right column again. This is a really powerful tool that you can actually use on many different apps simultaneously. So if you swipe up and hold from the middle, uh, of course, that's going to show you all the apps you have open. But if you have a stack of apps that are slid over, maybe you have three apps, like your email, your notes, and your music, you can swipe up and hold on that side, and you can switch between those very easily as well. It's almost like a totally different interface floating on top of what you're doing on your iPad. Put simply, it has its own app switcher. So remember I was showing you Spotlight a little bit earlier, you can actually tap and drag apps from Spotlight directly into Split View. So say I have Google Chrome open, if I hit Command Space and I find Google Maps, I can tap and drag that to the right side or the left side, and you'll see when a little black bar appears and you drop it there and then you have your split screen just from dragging it over. So if you have any apps open and you swipe up about an inch or maybe a couple centimeters from the bottom of your screen, what's called a dock opens up right there. And this is going to show you a lot of apps that you have permanently saved there, as well as some recent apps as well. This is great because you can tap and hold on any one of these apps to show all windows if you wanted to. That's one really good option for Chrome, for example. And you can see if you have a lot of different Chrome windows open easy to navigate between them. There's other shortcuts for other apps as well. So if you tap and hold on like Gmail, for example, you could go and compose an email. If you tap and hold on Safari, you can go to a new private tab, go to your bookmarks, different things like that. And speaking of multitasking and split screen, you can actually tap and drag text or images between apps in split view. So if you have notes on one side and Google images on the other, you can tap and drag it over and just drop it right into your notes. But sometimes if you have a lot going on, it's a little tricky to focus on one thing at a time. So creating custom focus modes is easily one of the most powerful things you can do on an iPad or on an iPhone. So from your settings, if you tap on focus, then we can tap on plus. We can name this focus mode whatever we want. So maybe I'll call this one study. Then we can say customize focus and you can choose which notifications are silenced from specific people or specific apps. You can change how your home screen looks to have a more dull background or a more exciting background. You can change, you can set a schedule for when this is going to be activated or deactivated. And this really helps to filter out distractions and make your iPad optimized for different parts of your life. For example, you could have a workout mode that mutes all notifications and makes it great for playing music, maybe in a gym. Next up, within settings, if you go to control center and then go to add or remove things, you can actually change what is actually showing up on the control center on the top. I recommend adding things like timers, which can be very useful. Then we have the category that I call ecosystem. Starting off, we have the ability to unlock your iPad with your Apple Watch. As long as you have wrist detection enabled and a passcode on your watch, both of those can be very easily added in settings. You can go onto your iPad, go to settings, go to touch ID and passcode, and then select unlock with your Apple Watch. That way you don't need a pin and you don't need face ID. As long as your Apple Watch is on you and you're close to your iPad, you can unlock that. Another really powerful tool you have with your iPad is if you're using a Mac, you have what's called Universal Clipboard. This also works with other Apple devices as well, but I specifically use it with a Mac and an iPad. So I can copy a link on my, on my Mac and I can paste it on my iPad. It saves everything on my clipboard, 
automatically. Additionally, when you set your Mac and your iPad next to each other, you'll be able to drag your mouse and use the keyboard on either device across very seamlessly as if it was just an extended display. But you can also use this as an actual extended display, which is very easy to do using what's called Sidecar. On your Mac, you can actually right click and select insert from phone or iPad, and then use your iPad to scan documents or take photos or sign things that can then go on your Mac. And then of course we have the category of Apple Pencil. There's a lot you can do with the Apple Pencil. It's one of the most powerful tools. I highly recommend getting one with basically any iPad you have. And this, the first one here is going to be to tap on a locked iPad, you just tap on the locked screen and you can start taking notes on here using the pencil, writing notes on a locked screen, it'll save it into Apple Notes. These are nice quick notes. And you can also open quick notes when you're anywhere on your iPad, just swiping up from the bottom right of your screen will open up a quick little notepad. You can take notes, type them, write them, draw them, whatever. But if you're drawing, not everyone has the ability to draw great circles. I certainly don't. So if you actually draw like a circle, like a really squiggly circle, terrible circle, and at the end you hold it, it'll convert into actually a really nice circle. Or it also works for squares and triangles and other shapes as well. A great tool that I recommend. Additionally, if you don't have a keyboard attached, sometimes it's annoying to bring up the keyboard on the iPad all the time, and it could be easier to just write in with your pencil. So you can scribble to type on many places on your iPad. So for example, if you're on Google in the search bar, typically you can only type in the search bar, but if you start writing with your pencil, it'll automatically convert that over to text. Also, if you swipe from the bottom left of your iPad up towards the center, this will take a screenshot. This is one of the many ways you can take a screenshot. Of course, you could also do this with the volume uh, and the lock button, the volume up and the lock button. You could do command shift three or command shift four if you have your keyboard on there. But if I'm just using a pencil, swipe up from the bottom left. And then while many people just say done here, there's a lot you can actually do within the screenshot interface. So of course you can mark it up, you can draw, you can use a ruler and draw lines based on that. So if I just set up this ruler and I use maybe a highlighter, I can make a perfectly straight line, great for highlighting text and things like that. But instead of just saying done, uh, what I like to do is if you tap on done, you can either copy and delete so you don't fill up your photo album. Instead, it'll just be saved to your clipboard, go over to messages, paste it, send it, and then you never have to worry about decluttering your photos. You can also save it to quick notes or save it to files. Next up, sometimes text is annoying to memorize and you can't really highlight it, you can't select it to copy it. And a really great way to manage this is within the screenshot editor. So you take a screenshot, screenshot editor pops up, tap on live text on the top right, and then all of the text on the screen is going to be selectable. So you can copy like a bank account number or it could be a phone number that you don't wanna memorize and retype and then paste that later on anywhere else that you need it to. Moving to 29 and 30, these are tips and tricks related to hardware. So even though I love the Magic Keyboard case, it's really useful, I use it all the time when I'm traveling, but when I'm at home, sometimes it's just a little bit too low, and what I like to use instead is an Anchor tablet stand. This, of course, is not sponsored, but I use this for all my different tablets. It gives you a lot of ports, it also charges your iPad, it sits a little bit higher off your desk, save some real estate. And then moving to number 30, you can actually connect any mouse or keyboard to your iPad. So you could of course plug them in by USB to the stand and it works as a hub, or you can connect them by Bluetooth. So if I have like an ergonomic keyboard, I don't wanna maybe use like an Apple one, I could just get a third party one and it works perfectly fine. And then lastly, if you go into settings, go to general, go to keyboard, go to hardware keyboard, and then go to modifier keys. This allows you to customize the modifier keys with any keyboard you're using uh, to just get some extra cool shortcuts. Those are my 30, but probably more like 33 or 34 top tips, tricks, and hidden features on the iPad. If you have any that I didn't mention, be sure to leave a comment down below. 